Kyle and Mike deserted me. They're going to get more pallet racking, but we had the doors open just to move cars around and get stuff so we could get the trailer. And it's snowing in Michigan, and it's October 18th, which is probably a record, which is probably not a record. Why does it have to be like 40 degrees already? Why don't I live in Florida? Like, what the heck? I, I got a parka on and it, it's like, it's October. What are we doing here? But nevertheless, the show goes on. So while those two goons are going to get more pallet racking, I am gonna do a video on my sweet wang. Um, anodizing came in on the uprights. So these I custom designed. Um, I'll show you how they mount to the trunk. They're super sweet. They were silver, so I didn't really want to show them off because it kind of looked weird because they were just big silver billet pieces. They're definitely not small. Um, but now they're black and they look crispy. So we're gonna do a little video and uh, show you guys how to do the install. I made a few sets. Uh, I already sold some to some boys. But um, yeah, it's not for streetcars. This is a race car wing. Um, definitely requires some modifications to get it to be chassis mounted and still look nice, but that's what we're gonna show you. So let's take a look. So we have an AJ Hartman, goose swan neck style, however you wanna call it, 72 inch. This thing is rowdy, let me tell you. Um, this is basically the biggest I could get within the rules for grid life for a street mod. I have to stay within the body limits, um, just in terms of width. So this was as wide as I could go. Um, and then these are the uprights I made. So it's a two piece design. This bottom piece uh, mounts to where your stock trunk latches mount. Latches is the wrong word. The hinges for the four link mechanism, when you open the trunk, it bolts to those. So it is chassis mounted. Uh, that's technically mounted to the quarter panel and the body. So it's super structural. I run a carbon fiber trunk. So I had the little wing before, the GT4 wing. Super sweet, honestly loved it from a visual perspective. Did it make downforce? Questionable. Not enough to like do damage to the like carbon trunk, which definitely is not built to withstand hundreds of foot pounds of downforce. So, right, like it probably, it could have made 60, 80 pounds you know, of downforce. Super sweet, I mean, you're buying a GT4 because it's, a visual upgrade, um, not because you're like, I need to bang out lap times. So, keeping the carbon trunk, that was a must. I love the duck bill. Um, this is the CSL style trunk. So it is um, exposed carbon on the bottom and then it was painted sapphire black metallic um, back when the car was black. And now it is black and orange and 35 different tones because that's just where the car ends up. But Back to these. So anodizing came out sick. You can still see the machine marks versus like where it's almost this rough looking texture. It's not actually rough, but um, the material was tumbled before it was uh, CNC'd. So it just has this sweet like black two-tone look to it. And I love that you can still see the machining swirls in it. It just really gives it a sweet look, some depth to it. Um, thought about doing like the cutout style. Like if we look at Mike's real quick, like you can see how you just go all the way through. And I think this looks way better on a standard mount wing. If you have a bottom mount wing, I love the open look, it's super sweet. When you go to a swan neck style and it has to be a much larger piece that comes up and goes back over, I don't think it looks as cool with the cutouts. I think that keeping it a big, black piece of aluminum and then just having these machine bevels looks way cooler. Everyone, to each their own, these are mine. You can't have them, they're sweet. Well, technically you can, I guess you could just buy them. But, all right, let's uh, slap this thing on. It's been looking a little nude just not having it up there. I got so used to having the big wing that now that the car's just been sitting getting some other upgrades, stay tuned in the next video for that. I'm putting the Ford 8.8 back in. I wanted some gear ratio changes with the 8 HP, but so that'll be the next video. But yeah, let's get this wing on. Let's show you how this is done.
the one big reason that I did go with AJ Hartman is because it's super easy to customize with him and I can I got this single element wing but I can just send him an email and he'll send a second element with the two mounts that can I that I can mount straight to this so if I ever want to upgrade to a dual element in the future I can and it's super easy with him I don't need a whole new wing or new mounts or anything like that when I did the work for this I made sure that the uprights could support the 1500 or, or 1475 or whatever the dual element makes um, in pounds of downforce. I made sure that the uprights could survive that. Um, the body is on the quarter panel. It's right where it bends down to meet with the, the trunk shell, I guess. I, I'm not sure what you would call that section of the body. Um, but if you put your hands under both bolts, you can feel the other side. It goes through a really beefy section of body. If I ever did the dual element or wanted to go crazy or was concerned with the body stiffness, um, I could really easily just make it tie down um, to the rails. But I know that my uprights are good for the 1500 pounds of downforce that it, it would make. Um, I'm sure the body would be too. It's obviously when you get to that level of aero, you just want to make sure that the wing don't go flying off. <laughs> I don't think the car will make it to there anytime soon. I really like the GT style that it's staying. so. Yeah, just wanted to make sure though, you never know what happens. I say this basically every year and then every year it changes and I'm just like, well, I need something crazy again. So, all right, let's, uh, we'll throw the wing on and then I'll show what modifications to the trunk I did and then still how easy it is for me to take the trunk on and off. so great. Oh yeah. Like, I don't know if it's possible to say, but it almost makes it look more subtle. It's not as crazy. Maybe because the trunk's not there, but. So for the trunk, what I did to make it super easy on myself is I wanted to retain like all of the features of the trunk. So I literally just cut the harness, added this um, Deutsch connector, and then did the, you know, cut it, put it the same on this side. And then I had to add two pins at the top. So I added the two pins um, that retains the front part of the trunk and I kept the OEM locking mechanism, I guess you could say, latch mechanism um, for the third mount at the bottom. So. Trunk's still mounted in three places. Um, it's super easy for me. I still can use my key or the button in the vehicle to pop the bottom one. And then I just simply push the two push pins and she pops out. The big thing was this. I had to take about one inch um, deep on both sides of the wing or of the trunk just to clearance the wing. So obviously there's not much I could do about that. It's needed it chassis mounted, that's where I had to go, so that's what I had to do. So, not the world's perfect solution, but it was the world's only solution. So, now, since the trunk basically still weighs nothing, I just take it and slide it through. Drop it down. Usually on this side, I'm not gonna actually latch it because all well, the battery's right there and it's not disconnected. But you get the point. Push, push, push. Definitely not secured. But we're gonna take two. There we go. Push, push. It's connected. Um, now I, I would just crank down. We're gonna leave it loose. I don't feel like climbing through the cage, but that's it. That's throw this table out of the way. 
that is it. Definitely looks a little gnarlier with the trunk because it kind of visually closes off the back of the car. You see how far it sits. I designed it right at that good old grid life five inches, so I literally could not be happier. Oh, I love the black. It looks great. I mean, it looked great in silver, but damn. All right, guys, that is a big wang. Now I just need to fix the rest of the car, but hey, if it's snowing, then what else am I gonna do? Gnarly. All right, guys, we're gonna call it a wrap there. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I am throwing in the Ford 88 again. I did just a gear ratio change with the 8HP. So we're gonna go over everything that's included in that kit and then just how easy that is to install. Um, again, still cheaper than a built BMW diff and I'm changing gear ratios, changing diffs like it's nobody's business. So, all right, stay tuned for that, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. It's uh, free for you, but it really does help us out and it keeps us motivated to keep making videos. So. Hope you enjoyed the big wang and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.